So suppose that you ask, you look, look at a survey, kind of a labor type of survey, and ask people how many hours you work, what is your hourly wage, and suppose you have another question that says uh, how many dollars you make per month. You may have thought that the product of the hourly wage than the number of hours will be even the same as how many they make per, per month. The equivalent here is this. What is your withdrawal, the number of withdrawals, and your consumption? Let me just rewrite this as saying that W times M over C should be equal to 1 for each household. Then let's take logs to make the deviations of this from 1 in percentage and let's plot this. It's not quite 1. It is centered at 1 and it's kind of normal looking, which is nice because it gives an idea. It's, it's an accounting identity. Forget about whatever crazy theories we may, I may have with Francesco, with my co-author. This is an accounting identity. Okay, so, and this is log, so this is 200 log points. Okay, so we're going to add measurement error to this data because it's sort of thing. For instance, we will reject that just, of course our theory, for instance, among other things, implies the accounting identity. So we'll reject it out of the world just because, but this, I think, gives us some idea that there is measurement error. And the fact that it's also centered at zero is kind of nice, because it looks like by averaging, you're getting rid of a little bit of measurement error. Why do you think that they get We don't know. This is a much smaller sample. This guy seems to be better at doing accounting identities. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. I mean, we tried with many things. This is actually much smaller. Actually, I should show you. We also look at the same data from Austria the same pictures, it's kind of amazing. It's a, a similar survey in Austria. Did you post it somewhere? No. Yeah, yeah it's the same pictures. So it's kind of like amazing. It, it does something like the, the C, the cash flow structure? Yeah, who knows where the measurement error is? Maybe in the end, maybe everywhere, really. But, I mean, we know, for instance, from our consumption diaries, that people make all sorts of reporting mistakes, there's heaping, all sorts of things. But, you know, sort of, we were surprised that we got this Austrian data was also more or less uh, around, around zero. <coughs> anyway, so that's what we did. So we estimate this model. So the guys without the ATM probably make three withdrawals and, and they recall more. Numbers, yeah. It's easier to do the yeah, it could be that, that they recall more. Right. Okay. The other guys, they go like once a week. Yeah. But I would have thought that these guys are better recording like electronic type of stuff. Yeah, but who looks at that? Huh? Who looks at that? No, but it's true. Oh, I see. So these guys actually do have to have a checking account on balance, if you're saying. Right. No, I mean, they probably write checks to, like... They do. And if you write checks, you may have the sort of transaction journal, yeah. which you probably can also make other notes. Yeah, you may also ask, who doesn't have an ATM? <laughs> <laughs> right? So who are these like forty percent of guys in Italy who have no idea? Then you should think about there are a lot of retired people in Italy, and they do have checking accounts though because the social security payment is made in the postal account. This in, a, in a, so that actually accounts for a chunk of them. They are disappearing um, for different <laughs> different reasons. Also because new people they do have uh, you know the percentage of people with ATM cards is going up. But no, because we're thinking maybe that. You know, that's that. <laughs> All right, so you could kind of like actually just plot the data just to estimate it. You could just plot, there's a simple function that tells you what this is, and this is as a function of the parameters, and in fact, as a function of m star. And then you could just plot the data. And you could just see that the. Nobody likes this plot, but we liked it a lot with our co author. Um, this plot has n on one axis and m over c on the other one. So in Bamboo Tobin, remember that uh, kind of that one has to be on the 45 degree line because w times n is equal to c, but m is equal to um, one half of w. So if you replace uh, m here, then you get that the product has to be equal to c, or if you divide it by c, the product is equal to one, you take logs, and it should be this line. 
as you change p, you obtain different lines, because the idea is that with the same m, you obtain the same average by making more withdrawals. That's our theory. So think about this. I interview Benny. Benny tells me his n and m over c. He's a point here. here. And then I said, OK, if you are there, you are somewhere in between p 10 and 20. That's, I mean, that's kind of maximum likelihood, but I'm doing it. Actually, this is more like GMN, right? using only two of the two of the of the um, of the predictions. And now, where you are in this <coughs> axis, it uh, will identify B relative to the other parameter. So this is Van Tobin. We can't really get to this data. That's why we have this other drugs model. But this may be also measurement error. That's why we want to use sort of maximum likelihood that it also will take into account. The measurement error by looking at the variability. That's kind of what maximum likelihood does with measurement error. You sort of try to look, it says things are very variable relative to the theory, it says this is noise. There are different variables, and we'll take that into account. But I just want to give you the idea. If you look at this, this looks kind of good to us on the theory, because guys without ATM, they look here. Guys with ATM, they look here with a P or somewhere between 20, and this guy with a P somewhere like 10 or so. You could use you pick different pair of variables. This is um, W over M and N. So why I'm doing this? Because these are two variables to estimate two parameters. But these are two different pairs of variables. So we, better, we, should, be able to, we should be better getting similar type of estimates if the model is not going to be rejected. I mean, that's another way of thinking of our over-identifying tests that are using GMN, right? You take two models, estimate the parameters. Take two other models, estimate the two parameters. The two parameters have to be similar. We actually going to use, instead of, well, this is a version of GMN also, everything is GMN, but this, we're going to use maximum likelihood and do an over identifying restriction test. But notice that here, using two other different variables, you also get something like guys with RTM in average have a P of 10, and the other have a P of 20. Anyway, we're not going to estimate it at the level just one parameter. We're going to estimate, we're going to make, we're going to average a little bit people just to get rid of measurement error. So we're going to get something on the order of 3,000 cells of people that are very similar. We're going to put it in a cell. Average them and think that the variations across them is purely due to measurement error. That's going to be our estimate. So these are all the cells that we have. And the size of the bubble is how many guys in each of the cells. The cells are made out of different years, different regions, people with different level of consumption, and those with ATM and without ATM. The size of each cell is about 10 or 20 households. So these are our parameters. This law of heterogeneity across the parameter across the law of cells. So mean means the mean across all the cells. So this is the parameter P. This is for households with ATM and without. So these guys have a much larger P, as they should. No? The idea is that these guys, that's why they have an ATM card. They, they must look, we didn't impose anything. But it looks sort of reasonable to us. Then this is those in the bottom, or 30% on the level of consumption. This think of rich and poor. More or less the same P. This is the value of B over C. So B is a cost. For those guys without ATM, we find a cost that is much larger than for those with ATM. So we think of this as sort of reasonable. We did many other type of estimates with the same type of models, so I'm not going to talk about it. Oh, this is something just to Right, slide it, not a lot, but a little bit. I guess I can. <laughs> <laughs> but this is sort of like we count for each cell how many of them we pass an over defined test at 10%. For more than half, we don't reject the model. But if you used to do this type of estimates, it's not bad. It just tells you that there is some sort of, that it just tells you that this seems to be kind of consistent, broadly. Mm -hmm. 